Ms. Hearn, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to solve a linear inequality. These are a lot like linear equations, except they have an inequality symbol in them. The steps are similar to linear equations as well. First, we're going to clear the denominators. We're going to find the least common denominator and multiply by it on both sides. Then we're going to distribute through any parentheses, combine like terms, and get all the terms with variables to one side and the constant terms to the other. Finally, we're going to divide by the coefficient of the variable to get it by itself. And here's where we see one difference. If that coefficient happens to be negative, then we're going to have to flip the inequality symbol. Finally, we have different options for writing the solution set than we do for a regular linear equation because there are an infinite number of solutions. We can write the solution set in set builder notation, we can graph it on a number line, or we can write the solution set in interval notation, which is what we do in this example. The inequality we're solving is 4x plus 3 over 4 minus 2x minus 1 over 11 is less than or equal to negative 4. This is an example of a linear inequality, meaning that the x's are um, not in the denominators and they don't have any exponents or roots over them. If we had any of those other things, we might need to approach the inequality differently. But since we don't, we're going to solve it pretty much the same way we would solve an equation that has denominators. We're going to start by clearing the denominators. I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator of 4 and 11, which would be 44. When we do this, since we have subtraction on the left side of the equation, inequality we're going to have to distribute. When you multiply, let me write this step out. You want to get to the point where you can do this step in your head, but this is what you're thinking. You're thinking of the 44 going into the numerator of each of these fractions, and then you're thinking on the right, let's see, 44 times 4, we're going to have negative 176. The reason for multiplying by 44 was to get the denominators to cancel. So how many times does 4 go into 1, go into 44? It goes in 11 times. And 11 goes into 44 four times. Again, we would like to be able to skip this step and just go straight to 11 times 4x plus 3 minus 4 times 2x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 176. That would be the ideal. But until you can get to that point, just write it in the numerator. Whenever you multiply a whole number times a fraction, you multiply it into the numerator. Proceeding from there, we're going to distribute through any parentheses. So we're going to have 44x plus 33 minus, remember to distribute that negative, minus 8x plus 4, because minus times minus is plus, is less than or equal to negative 176. Now combining like terms on the left, 44x minus 8x is going to give us 36x, and then positive 33, positive 4, we have positive 37. Okay, carry down that right side. Now, we want to get x by itself, just like in a regular old linear equation. So we're going to subtract 37 from both sides. Now, a lot of times in class, students ask me, do I need to flip the inequality on this step because of the negative? The answer is no. It's not the negative, it's dividing or multiplying by a negative. It's the operation. In this case, we're just subtracting. So, now we do need to be careful over here. When you have the same sign, you sum them and then keep the sign the same. So, this is going to be negative 213. And then we need to divide both sides by 36 to get that x by itself since we're dividing by a positive. Once again, we do not need to flip the inequality symbol. So we're going to have x less than or equal to negative 213 over 36, but we should reduce. I noticed, for example, that 3 goes into each one of these numbers. So 3 goes into 21 seven times. 3 goes into 3 once. That's negative 71 in the top and the bottom. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. Just a quick check. Is this completely reduced? Well, 12 only has these prime factors. They have 2 and 3. So 2 is definitely not going to go into 71. And if you check, 3 doesn't go in either. So that is completely reduced. But 
we're not quite done because the instructions asked us solve the inequality, write solution set in interval notation. This is not interval notation. How do we write this in interval notation? If you're comfortable with interval notation, you probably can immediately write it in interval notation. But for those who are getting comfortable with it, I recommend you draw it on a number line first. You place the number value that you have on the number line, in this case negative 71 over 12. The inequality symbol is pointing to the left, so we're going to shade to the left. And then we need to decide if we're including negative 71 twelfths or excluding it. In this case, because there is an or equal to, anytime there's an or equal to, we're including that in our answer. And there are a couple of different ways to denote that. Uh, one way is with a closed dot. The way that I prefer, because it corresponds to interval notation, is to actually use a bracket a bracket as opposed to a parenthesis facing the direction of the shaded region of the number line indicates that we're including negative 71 twelfths in our solution set as well as everything smaller than negative 71 twelfths. Since this interval goes on forever in the negative direction we know that our answers are going to include everything from negative infinity up to our boundary point negative 71 twelfths we always use parentheses in interval notation when we have an infinity or negative infinity, and the negative 71 twelfths has a bracket because we're including it. So the solution set to the inequality is negative infinity to negative 71 twelfths inclusive. Ms. Hearn, let's get started. So in this video, we're going to solve a linear inequality. These are a lot like linear equations, except they have an inequality symbol in them. The steps are similar to linear equations as well. First, we're going to clear the denominators. We're going to find the least common denominator and multiply by it on both sides. Then, we're going to distribute through any parentheses, combine like terms, and get all the terms with variables to one side and the constant terms to the other. Finally, we're going to divide by the coefficient of the variable to get it by itself. And here's where we see one difference. If that coefficient happens to be negative, then we're going to have to flip the inequality symbol. Finally, we have different options for writing the solution set than we do for a regular linear equation because there are an infinite number of solutions. We can write the solution set in set builder notation, we can graph it on a number line, or we can write the solution set in interval notation, which is what we do in this example.